the police officer followed him for over two miles. And when he realized he was in trouble, he made a, a, a legal U-turn, or he turned the corner, and the cop followed him, and he knew then he was in trouble. The cop pulled him over and said he pulled him over because he didn't turn his, his uh, turn signal. He was too close to the corner when he turned his turn signal on. And then in conversation, after the boy told him that uh, he was being uh, recorded, he, he uh, then said that I stopped you because you eyeballed me when you passed me. And um, it, 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 it didn't escalate. He got a ticket, but then they withdrew the ticket. The police department's totally against the police officer's activity. And uh, the, the, the boy went and uh, hired an attorney. This is the last phase of it right now is he has hired an attorney. But what the, the uh, uh, police department wanted him to do was to have a sit-down meeting with the police officer so that they could kind of talk it out, eat some peanuts like uh, Obama had the audacity to do up in uh, uh, D.C. with uh, Skip, uh, what's his last name? They call him Skip, the, the black professor who got pistol whipped in his own kitchen. He was climbing in, in the window of his own home and, and uh, well, you know about that. But they wanted to drink some uh, beer and eat peanuts and see if they couldn't resolve the problem. But the last report, I just heard it on the radio as I was coming in today, that the gentleman uh, has now hired an attorney, and they're going to pursue this as far as they possibly can. So I just wanted to bring you up on that. It's out of Dayton, Ohio. Uh, that's about the most I can tell you about it right now. So you can hear it. Yep. Okay. Now, this securitization is a tricky process, a very tricky process. And what's happening is these um, these um, uh, banks are literally stealing are literally stealing our monies, destroying our promissory notes, and then still charging us for and, and charging us monthly payments. And for those that get behind, they're throwing them out. Now, the, 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 the main process, the main defense against this is an audit. I can get you an audit. I can get audits for you. A uh, donation of 300, is it 300 bucks? No, it's 500. 500 bucks to get you a complete audit. And then if you wanted it to be uh, notarized and a certificate wise certified, uh, you have to pay an extra fee. However, we know that if we get the, if we can authenticate our audit, uh, that is makes it a positive audit that goes above and beyond the the uh, certificate certification. So you need to think about it. If you are losing your home, if you put out of your home, everyone you got over six years to file charges against the uh, the uh, mortgage companies. You have over six years, and it's in so doing. Uh, you can bring up, you can start pulling out all of your paperwork. And there are a multitude of charges on everyone's closing. Everyone's closing. There's a multitude of charges that you can use. And the most positive thing about it, after you, uh, you uh, get your audit, which will verify that the, that the note is destroyed, the most positive thing about the violation is you will learn as you go along and study your paperwork because the judges, the attorneys, the bailiffs, all of those court officials, your sheriff, they all know the real process. 
They know the real process of foreclosure and eviction. There's no if and buts about it. They know all the they know all the if ands and buts, and they know exactly what you have done or have not done. And what they do is listen to your conversation. If you act like you know what you're doing, they, their whole attitudes change, and you will be given a free pass. A lot of people are winning their cases just on the knowledge of foreclosure. And there's a lot of material out there, a lot. There's no reason for you not to be concerned, especially if you lost your home. I know you're living somewhere now. And so by you living somewhere now, you you can uh, you don't have to rush. You don't have to be under pressure. All you have to do is just take your time, read. Uh, I lost my home in 2012. I stopped making payments in 2008. Uh, all of that process time, there was a lot of pressure. I was on the, the right track. They made millions of mistakes that, that I know of. But then you, you're back at square one because you need to know court procedure. I just got some information today on, on uh, uh, how the audit can be used against you. I haven't read it yet, but there's, they know that people are getting wise to them. Uh, the mortgage company, the banks, they're not mortgage company. If you call your, your um, how can I say this? The bank that you have that has your loan, it's a bank. It's not a mortgage company. It's a bank. Now, when they start collecting money from you, they become a server, which is nothing more than a third-party debt collect, which violates Fair Debt Collection Practice Act. There's a lot of information on the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act, a lot of information. They try and get around it because they claim that they're servers, or if you're ignorant and uh, call them a mortgage company, they'll, they'll go along with it. And they'll tell you we don't have that type of information. Well, the law says if they're collecting money from you, they are a debt collector. And if they are not the original mortgagees in your paperwork, they become third-party debt collectors. You need to know that. You need to study it. I got into this entire business through the knowledge of uh, third-party debt collectors. And I've learned a lot. There's a lot more to learn, of course. That that uh, securitization is used with credit cards, automobiles, homes, boats, airplanes. Most of your big-ticket items that are, what can I call them? that you have credit, you take credit out for them, big ticket items. That's when you uh, uh, fall under the securitization program. Now, the first process in this securitization is what they call pooling, S P S A, pooling and servicing agreement. Pooling and service agreement set forth below is a summary of the material provisions of the agreement which are not described elsewhere in this perspective, which means that most of the information that has really stolen your home, you don't have any idea what they did. That's why they pleaded guilty to the government and they're still doing it today because they know that you are not going to do your homework and sue them. Plus, they sent out between six and $1,500 to most of the 
uh, guilty or uh, not guilty, but most of the victims of this so-called foreclosure uh, drama. And most people say to hell with it. They took that money, spent it. They didn't realize that it said in the in the package that this does not prevent you from suing them. But since we don't read, we don't get that type of information. And also, let's remember, you know, in fighting to be free, fighting to be have a nationality, fighting to be sovereign and live in peace, fighting to, for self-determination, you still have to live every day. When we had our seminar, we got questions, uh, the same question until we really brought it to the forefront. Will I lose this? Will I lose that? Will I lose my retirement if I change my name? Will I lose my Social Security? Will I lose my investments? The answer is no, no, no. And the reason that it's no, no, no is because all of your activity in the United States, all of your activity in the United States was done through the straw man. Was done through the straw man. You can never get away from the straw man. In order to live in the United States, <clears throat> and I'm saying that very loose, because United States, by definition, is only 13 states or 13 colonies, so-called colonies. But since the Buck Act, they have maneuvered themselves, and they claim to be throughout the 50 states. When they mention the 50 states, or when they mention United States, they have to be careful how they say it. If they say United States and the 50 states, they got everybody. But if they say United States of America, they're only talking about five territories. I'm not going to try and name them, but I know I can't get it. But Philippines, Puerto Rico, uh, Samoa, and there's a couple more. It's five territories. That's it. Five territories and 13 colonies is the only thing that makes up the United States of America. America was never a part of the United States. They did that. They did that. We need to, you know, we need to study. That's all I can tell you. We need to study. Okay? Where uh, a particular provisions or terms used in agreement are referred to. Such provisions or terms are as specific in the related agreement. The agreement of the Margie's loans. They make a contract with the Margie's loans at the time of insurance issuance, not insurance, issuance of the certificate of a series, the depositor will cause the, cause the mortgage loans con conspiring and relating trust funds to be assigned to the trustee together with a principal and interest received by or on behalf of the depositor on a or be on or with respect to such mortgage loans after the cutoff date. Now, that's, that's gobbledygook, but what they're saying is you make an agreement. When you close, there's a cutoff date for you to pool, for you to make this, this agreement, this PSA. There's a 90-day cutoff period. And I want to tell you specifically that these rules, regulations, that are set up by the government, or better yet, let's say it like it is, by the Currency Act are rigid. 
very, very rigid. And what has happened in time, corruption, grab and corruption, has taken over throughout the government. So it goes from the closing, uh, what would you call them, uh, title company, and that realtor. Most of your realtors are, are dumb. And that's, that's the person that takes you out, finds the house, show you all the stuff, have you fill out the application, do all the paperwork. Most of them are dumb as a doornail. They have no idea what's going on. They're out to sell houses, make money, and move on. When the market is booming, they, don't, they have no idea what's going on. They don't realize what they're really doing to you. So it, it, it's difficult to even attack them or even talk to them. They don't know. They, they just don't know. And they really don't care because their living is to sell houses, sell homes. But there's a cutoff date. you got 90 days to put that mortgage into a PSA. No ifs, no ands, no buts. Once you put it in, you must swear under the penalty of perjury. You almost take an oath that you have done everything correctly in order for it to be in that mortgage PSA. Well, it got so good in, in 208, they set up what we know today as uh, sub, subprime lenders, meaning they had companies that would lend money to a application. If the application was in order, they would lend the money, or so-called lend the money. They didn't care if it was correct. That's your first place to start. You need to get your application. Once you get the application, and they have to give it to you, so you ask for it. Once they give you the application, all you have to do is read it. And you will determine that whoever that person is that borrowed the money was not you. Now, one of the big tricks they do, they make, if it's a husband and wife, they have the wife to sign the, the promissory note and the husband sign the mortgage. That's a trick. Why do they do that? Well, first of all, if the husband is working, let's forget his credit, they will take the total income of the husband and give it to the wife and make her look like she is the the home, the, 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 the giver of the home, single, single parent home or single uh, a, a mother home, and her income is almost double, maybe triple. Because, you know, most men make more than the, than the woman. So as a result, she qualifies right off the bat. Where if she's making, let's say, $1,800, $2,000, dollars a month, by the time they do this quick fix, she makes 6000 a month. She's a good candidate. They don't ask for backup to, to do it. They lend the money to the paperwork. Because it was it was too good to miss the homes, to miss the sale, not the homes, the sale. So that would be one of your first peak peekaboos. Get that application and go through it. Right on the first page near the top, they talk about income. See who signed that application. Because the application is what creates the loan. The application is really the promissory note. That's really deep. But that's what's happening. And, you know, a program like I'm doing tonight is almost a, a program that everyone needs to know. Because if, you, if you're not living, you know, if you're not buying a home now, you probably want to get one soon or sooner or later. You want to buy one. 
and you need to know what you're getting into. Yes, they have changed some of the rules. Yes, they are looking at it closer now. But I'm telling you, they've learned so much trickology, and they can interview a prospective borrower and realize that they're in the dark and with a job, they're going to get them. And they know that they will not be able to survive and make payments. Yep. That's the first thing you want to look at. And that's called the assignment of the mortgage loan. At the time of issuance of the certificate of, of a series, the depositor will cause the, mar, cause the mortgage loans comprising the related trust fund to be assigned to a, a trustee together with all principal and interest received by or on behalf of the depositor. On or with respect to such mortgage loans after the cutoff date other than principal and interest due principal and interest uh, cut off date uh, principal and interest due Before the cutoff date, there you go. The trustee will concurrently with such assignment deliver the certificate to the depositor in exchange for the mortgage loan. So now what they're doing, they're creating a security with your mortgage. Now, they don't take one mortgage. They have a certificate. And the certificate can be worth anywhere from a million to... 40 million, 100 million, you know, it, 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 it really doesn't matter. But they know how to put certain loans in. They know what's your bad loan. They got them labeled, they call them trances, trance, T-R-A-N-C-E-S, trances. They have certain way of putting the loans in transits, transits, so that they know A, B, and C. C is, is poor payments, A is is super payments. So they put those super loans into the big bundles, which is called security-backed mortgage loans. Security-backed mortgage. Oh, it's a it's a mean it's a mean game they play. And the fall guy is always you. And just to hear what I'm saying and look and look and remembering what you did is enough for you to file charges in federal court. Now, don't get crazy and start getting a, an attorney right off the bat. Before you get an attorney, go down to the federal building, wherever you may live, and ask for a, a package. It's about a half inch thick, maybe a little, little, little more than a half inch thick. And it's called... Um, a civil lawsuit, procedural civil lawsuit, and it, it read it. It's thick because there's three pages for everything, and if you're suing more than three people, you may have to go back and get more paperwork because you have to. Everybody you sue, you got to fill out specific paperwork for that particular person. Yep. Yeah. yeah. If anyone has any questions on this, uh, feel free to hit number one, and uh, I'll see it, and we'll we'll discuss your question. Cause this is a it's a remarkable process that they do. It's it's a gimmick. It's a game, and they've been winning, and we need to learn this game. We need to learn it so that we can start winning. You dig it? Okay. Each mortgage loan will be identified in a schedule appearing 
as an exhibit to the related agreement. Such schedule will include information as to the outstanding principal balance of each mortgage loan after application of payments due on the cutoff date. You have to be caught up. You have to make payments monthly because once they mix it, and change it from a single mortgage of 100000 and it becomes a $1 million security, if there's a bad mortgage in there, so let's say that million uh, dollar, uh, what we will call the uh, security-backed mortgage, let's say that that $100,000 one, you, they, they made a mistake and put a C Trench, trench, trench. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Trench. In with the, which would be a C, they put it in with the A. Well, once it goes out, it's over with. You can't bring it back because there are other restrictions, such as you must destroy the promissory note. And they say that you, that's one of the oaths you take or one of the uh, uh, penalties under perjury you, you swear to because if you keep the promissory note, which they do, you can make them keep making payments on the underside to the borrower and at the same time you're making money out in the market through your security-backed mortgages. And they call that double-dipping. The, the IRS will literally tear you a new one for double dipping. So there's no way, once you find out through your, your audit that your mortgage has been securitized, what, the day it was securitized, the mortgage was paid in full. Now you got to be able to, that's your argument. And you got to be able to defend that argument. I'll say it again. Once they securitize your loan, which has very high restrictions, they don't take anything in there. And it's so powerful that when you take a mortgage and put it into the PSA, you have to swear that you have followed every step, crossed every T, and dotted every I. No excuses. They don't take no excuse. And it must be done within 90 days. Now, they, in turn, Okay. See yeah. Okay. I'm doing nine things at once, so everybody just hold on for a minute. Yeah. Okay. Now, in addition, the depositor will deliver. Now the depositor is the crooks that come out of the lower lower levels. They are the so-called, what is it, they got, uh, what can I describe a depositor? He's the one that's looking for the investment or the investor. So the depositor will deliver or cause to be delivered to the trustee or, the, or to the custodian here, here in after, here in after referred to as to each mortgage loan, among other things. Number one, the mortgage note endorsed without recourse. So the first thing they have to do, now remember, when they show you a mortgage note, because you'll be screaming that you want to verify the debt. So they'll, here's what they'll do. They'll send you a pay history, They'll send you a copy of the mortgage, and they'll send you a copy of the promissory note. 
Now, if your audit says that your mark, your note has been securitized, then you want to look at that note and make sure it has on it stamp. It's like you put it in the bank. It'll say endorsed without recourse in blank or the order of the trustee. So that means that they're going to say have a, a, a power of attorney. They're going to cash. They're, they're beginning to cash your promissory note. They're getting ready to cash your promissory note. So they're getting ready to, to do the, the, the rang dang doodle on your butt. And they know that you'll start missing payments, or better yet, you're coming in slow with your payments. They called you and you told them that you were out of work, or your wife was out of work, or you or you were sick, whatever the case. They know they got a problem. Now, the first thing they have to do is make sure that that uh, mortgage that's in that million or million dollar security back certificate, which is a security, it has to stay in good standing. So they'll either make payments for you or they'll pay taxes for you or they'll just literally make the payments. That's what they'll do, make payments for you. They won't pay you. But then they'll start the process of eviction. And part of that stimulus money, if you remember, went to the banks so that they could offset the bad loans and the monies they put in. So they were getting, I think the last count I heard, was $4,700 per eviction. And remember, it, as far as the bank is concerned, an eviction is a positive process. There's nothing negative about eviction. There's nothing negative about eviction because, okay. because they get if they can sell the house, they get a new promissory note. Yeah. Stay on target. I can't see the, the, the board, so if you have a question, just hold on. I'll be back. Okay, number one. Number one, the mortgage note endorsed without recourse. Yeah. Yep. Without recourse uh, in blank or to the order of the trustee. Now, you've seen that on checks. Pay to the order of. Except that the depositor may deliver or cause to be delivered a loss note affidavit in lieu of an original mortgage note that has been lost. Now, if he knows he may be in trouble, the first thing he's going to do is put in a affidavit that he lost, the, the note has been misplaced. And they do that quite often. If... Yeah. Okay. Number two. Turn it off. Okay. I know. So what you want me to do? Turn it off. Just cut it off. It's not coming through here. Testing. See it now. I mean, like I, I was trying to show. You. Yep, the signal's going through. If you take a look at signal, he just he just left. But I can't hear anything, so I'm going to turn on the mic and see if anybody can hear. Me. See what happens. Okay. 
Yep. Yep. They, uh, if you can let me roll for another 10 minutes, take a break. I'll take a break. Yep. Um, yep. Information is free. The law. There is hope. You are tuned in to the Ron March Show. Visit ronmarch.com. You are tuned in to the Ron March Show. Visit ronmarch.com. Donate at ronmarch.com. Information is free. The law. There is we're going to kick this thing right off again. Yep. What we're really talking about, for you uh, late late callers, late uh, people, we're really talking about mortgages and uh, how they are taking advantage of us by making us pay all these prices, or better yet, these monthly payments, when there is no money. And not only are they, you know, it would be one thing if if they were charging us to pay, but then it becomes a whole different ballgame when they have the audacity to come and take your house. And some people still have to make payments. They can be sued for the remainder of it. The government saw fit. There was a lady out of Ohio who lost her home. And that's not a big thing to do, especially if you if you have uh, lost your job or you're in retirement on a fixed income. It's not difficult to lose your home or anything else because the prices are changing and going up and what have you. So she went to work and just like myself, I began to study and read and figure out. And right off the bat, you can see where you're getting screwed and tattooed. Right off the bat. But it's not easy to win in court because you have to realize that the court system is against you. Most of them are on the bankers' payrolls. So it's not an easy process. So I've been out of out of out of that I lost that home about two years ago. And I've been studying like a madman of what I did know and what is coming down the pike every day, every day, and what's happening in the industry of mortgages. Now, when they set this process up, when they filed bankruptcy, they knew that they was going to have a problem with ticket items. Back in 1933, a barn, a plow, a mule, uh, an inventory, all of these type things were ticket items. You know, they didn't have televisions, telephones, stuff like this, of any type of, you know, of any any type of of a magnitude. All they had was, you know, different types of slow stuff, automobiles, stuff like that. Well, they knew that the bankers they were the first ones to start complaining because in order to get the economy going, they knew that the, that they had to get people jobs and then the job would create the market to purchase ticket items. Well, the banks told the government that we could not tie up our bank funds for 30 years, 10 years, or five years waiting on someone to pay off a loan 
in order for them to survive. It wouldn't it wouldn't serve the purpose. So they came up with this uh, creative accounting. Let's call it that creative accounting. One of the processes was called securitization. Another one was called, uh, and I'm not a banker. I'm not into accounting. I'm just telling you from a layman's term what I saw, what I read. Hypothesis. That's when you could put nine zeros behind any deposit. And every time you use the money, you have to drop a zero. So you can use the money nine times before you can drop it. Well, it worked well, but they had to go further and set up what we know today as the, and I'm going to pull it up right now, the Glass-Steagall Act. The Glass-Steagall Act. Now, I know you probably never heard of the Glass-Steagall Act. Did I put that in? Don't look like it. It don't look like it. But they, they put in what they call the Glass-Steagall Act, which made the banks stay in the banking business. No hanky panky. None. No hanky panky. They told them there will be no hanky panky. And it worked in keeping the banks in check. But believe it or not, your first black president, that damn Bill Clinton, that everybody thought was such a beautiful president, while he was smiling and playing the saxophone and wearing sunglasses, trying to act like a black man. He was signing bills and setting up agreements that made everybody in Washington happy, up to and including the Republicans. Republicans gave him a hell of a party because he repealed the Glass-Steagall Act and came up with the graham Blyben Act. But you don't have to have me tell you that that graham Bly, Blyben Act was was a mockery of justice, complete mockery. And that's when the entire banking business began to boom, 2008. Credit cards, went sky, was, was, was out. Mortgages was there. Credit cards was there. Student loans was there. The economy was on its way. The Democrats did that. They knew that it was going to come to a bust. They called it a bubble. A lot of y'all heard it, didn't know what the hell you was listening to. And they kept saying that the, bu the, bu the bubble will burst. And you had some people predicting when it would be. And it did burst. And we're in the downside of that busted bubble right now. But they, in turn, are still snowballing us across the board. So I'm just trying to lay on you information because I know you're in, if you're living in a home and making payments, if you're not having trouble today, you're going to have trouble soon, very soon especially when they start cutting or devaluing when they when they start devaluating the funds and that's in process as as I speak we don't realize it but it, September is going to be one of the damnedest months that you have ever experienced it's so bad you know the pope's on his way so I guess they're going to do some praying and try to keep everybody in check with, with the God on earth, whatever. But anyway, he's on his way. So I'm trying to explain to you the biggest ticket item that you could ever buy in life, in your lifetime, is a home. 
And the reason that it, it's so big is the payback process is such a conniving, creative type payment program that is almost like you never pay it off. Or if the economy continues to grow, you'll pay three times as much as the house is worth. Or you pay for the house. The house is never worth, you know. Most of you buy those homes. Like I, I purchased my home at $29,000 in 1990, no, no, 1979. By 1990, the same house was worth $105,000. How they do that, I don't know. But the market went up. And they know how to finagle the the re realtors. They know how to do it. So they don't sense me trying to explain it. I don't know. But you got people that are getting put out of homes and they owe a mortgage of 150 plus thousand. And they're selling the homes within three to six months for twenty and thirty thousand dollars. Same home. Because they're trying to make the process start all over again. And see, most of you young people out there should know this type of information because it, it's an ongoing cycle. And since you got seniors that have lived through it, then they would know. And I'm telling it to you. They know how to lower the value, raise the value. They know how to do that. But it's all depending on two things. Employment and your faith in the dollar. And you have to have faith in the dollar because the dollar is not real. The dollar is monopoly money. So they call it consumer's uh, confidence. They have to keep the consumer's confidence up in order for them to do these tricks. So I was reading where... They do the process of your first within the first ninety days of closing, the law the the banking law says you must if you if your intent is not let's talk about the, the, the downside of securitization. If the if the mortgage companies do not or the banks, it ain't the mortgage companies, if the banks don't sell your mortgage within ninety days and be a part of that PSA. Now they don't have to do it, but if they if they are not a part of the PSA, they have to keep your home until you pay for the home or get put out of the home. And they have to carry it on their books so their their assets will go up. And banks cannot own homes. So it's totally illegal for them to keep it on the books. And they have to pay taxes and carry the house for 30 years or whatever the mortgage is. You know, it's just a matter of putting all this information together. It's not complicated. Now, the complication comes when you... Sit down and say, I'm going to go and try and to get my home back. Now, you're not going to get the home back because somebody's in it, but you can be compensated for the home that they took, and you can file for damages. And they have a conversion damage or a conversion law that whatever your total value of loss, you can multiply it by 700, I believe. It's, un it's ungodly. That conversion is really, a, it's really something. But you need to look into it. That's all I'm saying to you. You need to look into it. Your car, you should ask yourself, how can you buy a $50,000 $50, automobile, pay it off in five, five years, and buy a $50,000 home and it take you 30 years to pay it off? You ever thought about that? 
Does that seem a little strange to you? It was all set up in the New Deal. And it's illegal, I'm telling you. It's against the Banking Act. We had enough time. I wanted to talk a little bit about that Banking Act. But the first thing they do with your mortgage, they deposit it in the bank. When they deposit it, it must be stamped. Or better yet, it must be endorsed with a stamp saying without recourse in blank. Or it should say without recourse by the order of the trustee. So when they send you a copy of your, a so-called copy, if it's not stamped, it's not the original. I'm telling you. You know, y'all got to get in on this. That's number one. Number two, the mortgage or similar instrument, which is a mortgage, with evidence of recording indicated thereon, except for any mortgage not returned from the public recording office, in which case the depositor will, unless otherwise specified in the related pro, uh, prospe pro, uh, prospectus supplement, deliver or cause to be delivered a copy of such mortgage together with a certificate that the original of such mortgage was delivered to such recording office. So that's why when you get your mortgage back, it will be stamped that it, was, it went through the recording office. The original was kept in the recording office, and they give you a copy of the mortgage. Because if you ever recorded anything in the county, they put a sticker in the upper right-hand corner of your document. Man, oh, man. Thank God for Jonah Bay. Okay. Number three, an assignment of the mortgage to the trustee, which assignment will be in recordable form. So when they move it from the table, give it to the uh, re, uh, the the um, a recording company, which would be recording, the uh, uh, register of deeds, they must give you an assignment that it was sent there. The chain of title has to be complete in all mortgage transactions. Now, that's not hard to remember. The chain of title must be complete. That means that everywhere the mortgage went, it had to be a, an assignment sent to you that you have a record of it. Okay. Number three. An assignment of the mortgage to the trustee, which assignment will be in recordable form, and, number four, such other security documents as may be specified in the related prospectus supplement or the related agreement, unless otherwise specified related prospect prospectus supplement. The depositor will promptly cause the assignments of the related loans to be recorded in the appropriate public office of real real property records, except in states in which, in the opinion of the council, such recording is not required to protect the trustee's interest in such such loans against the claim of any subsequent transferee, which would be me, or any successor to or credited of the depositor 
are the originator of such loans. With respect to any mortgage loan that the cooperative that are cooperative loans, the depositor will will cause to be delivered to the trustee the related original cooperative note endorsed without recourse in blank or of the order of the trustee. All of this must be done in perfect order. There's no exceptions. There are no exceptions. And we have no idea what happens to our information. Yep. All of this is kind of like, as I would say, routine. So, let's move on. I think you should be totally aware of this type of information because this is where it all starts. This is where it all starts when you are beginning to challenge the authenticity of your securitization. Now remember, securitization is not illegal. But the way they do it, it is illegal. To understand PSA, pool servicing agreement, you must understand basic mortgage transactions and the securitization process. Basic mortgage transactions. When you take out a loan to buy a home, the lender provides you with the money. We'll put that in parentheses to make the purchase in exchange for your promise to repay the loan plus interest. This promise is contained in the promissory note. Now remember, I told you, the promissory note comes after you sign the mortgage. Your application comes first. The application is really what they use to get the loan. Promissory note is just a agreement that you will pay the loan back. And they keep all of the original documents and they are called, once they keep them, they're called secured interest. And the, and the judges will give them ownership of the property through secured interest, as long as you don't know what secured interest is. Dig it? When you take out a loan and buy a house, the lender provides you the money to make the purchase in exchange for a promise to pay. The promise is contained in a promissory note. To learn more of the, about the mortgage terminology, see mortgage foreclosure, boom, boom, boom. As part of the transaction, you also put up the home as security and or, quote, unquote, deposit for the loan. The mortgage is the document that pledges the, the home as collateral for the loan. The mortgage is the document that pledges the home as collateral. See, all of that is a trick. Because number one, you have never seen a check in your name that went to the seller. you never seen one. You're really paying for it. You don't know what the seller got. All of that was electronic. You never saw any money. When you sign the promissory note, it said at the top, I have received a loan and I will pay back the money. That's not 
a meeting of the minds because you never received any money. You never received a loan. Everything was done with your credit, through your credit report that determined how much money you would receive, so-called money. You got to remember this. And they're going to make mockery out of it because they're going to say, well, do you think they just gave you the money? No, they didn't do a damn thing. They can't prove they gave me the money. You can't prove they gave me the money. You got to be cold. You got to be right on the on the money when you deal with these things. But I can prove that they sold my promissory note. What that's worth? Put that in your pipe and smoke it. And the law in Michigan says if the mark if the note is not present with the mortgage, then there's no there's no ground for foreclosure. Bring up Saruman. I got something for you on that Saruman crap too. Securitization process. In the process called securitization, multiple loans, including both promissory note and the mortgage, with similar characteristics are pooled, put together, and then sold in a secondary market, often to a trust. Basically, securitization takes individual mortgage loans, bundles them into a package, and turns them into marketable securities called mortgage-backed securities that can be bought and sold. An individual loan that is part of the pool is considered a securitized mortgage loan. And remember, I told you, in order to put your, your mortgage to be placed in that pool, it's got to be perfect. They do not take prisoners. That's why it wasn't too difficult for them to sue the banks. Because they knew exactly what the banks had done. And once they got the complaint, that's all they needed was a complaint. Who's who in the securitization process? The key parties in securitization are, listen to the the players, the originator. The originator are the parties that initially create the assets that will be securitized in the mortgage industry. The The original lender, typically a bank or mortgage lender, is considered an originator. Countrywide, home loans was a originator. Then you have the investor. It said countrywide, I believe, at one time had over 65% of all mortgages in the United States. Countrywide had them. And they, and they came up with the sneak trick company called MERS, M-E-R-S, Mortgage Electronic Registrar Systems. The investor purchased shares or certificates in a mortgage loan pool and are entitled to receive payments from the trust that holds the pool. Once they bag them up, Put them into a PSA. They find an investor. The investor can buy portions of it because, like I told you, they range anywhere from a million to a hundred million dollars, and they get a certificate. And from the certificate, they get dividends from your monthly payment. Yes. They get dividends from your monthly payment. But see, they don't stop there. You're still making full payments on that house, and your promissory note has disappeared. 
So you're not going to get it back. You're going to get a letter from the bank. Congratulations. You have paid off your mortgage. You're the biggest idiot in the world. That's what that amounts to. Trustee. Trustee oversees the trust and protects the invest, investor's interest. Well, the trustees are normally attorneys that work with or work out of the title company. Their job is to make sure. See, that's what makes them guilty. They're supposed to make sure that everything is on the up and up. So they make swear oath that it's done the proper way when it is not. Then you have the loan servicer. This is where people get confused and, and think a servicer is your mortgage company. No, no. The servicer is a, is a third-party debt collector. He collects your funds. The servicer manages the loans and make up the pool, which is called PSA. The PSA is a contract that governs the relationship between the various parties in the securitization process and controls what can, can and cannot be done with the trust. PSA will state, among other things, the exact steps needed to create a trust, how bundled mortgage, mortgage loans are transferred into the trust, how securities are issued, and the duties, rights, and obligations of each party. The trustee has a big job. For example, the PSA will describe the services, services compensation. Often the service is entitled to retain the late charges, insufficient fund fees, reconve reconveyance fees, assumption fees, and other fees that it collects. That's why your monthly payments will fluctuate. They come up with all kinds of gimmicks that will keep you D&D, &D, ducking and dodging. BSA will also carefully describe the loan servicer's responsibilities pertaining to collecting payments. Remember I told you, anyone that collects payments is a debt collector. Handling loss mitigations, including the authority to modify loans. And foreclose. The servicer can foreclose. Finding a copy of the pooling and service agreement, if the securitization is public, the PSA will, will be filed with the Securities Exchange, SEC, and you can find a copy at www.sec.gov. You can go online and find out if your mortgage has a cuspid, cuspid number, C-U-S-I-P, cuspid. Cuspid. Cuspid number is used to identify what's in the bundles. But they can't take them out because of... The, the amounts that have already been paid and then everything is fixed, so you can't take them out. So that's why everything in there has to be done correctly. And when the economy gets bad, this is what the results of it is, and that is the investors begin to sue. That's what happened with I am, I mean, um, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. They sued the banks and settled out of court. They got what they want. Okay. We got a lot of getting more daggum calls. Now, 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Now, how securitization nullifies the original note and mortgage. The original lender is paid in full once they destroy the note. I've been telling you that. By the method of pooling and trenching, they convert it from negotiable to non-negotiable instruments. You can look that up in Article 8 of the UCC. They changed the promissory note from a negotiable instrument to a non-negotiable instrument. That means that upon transfer and recipient, that means upon transfer, the recipient of the payment is satisfied in full and a new obligation arises between the seller and buyer, separate and apart from the borrower. So, God. So once they flip the note from a negotiable instrument to a non-negotiable instrument, which is what you call a security security uh, instrument, once they do that, the contract between the bank and the borrower is defunct. The new contract is between the, the bank and the trust where they put the note which nullifies the original contract. This is what I'm telling you. They have no reason. When they when they do what they do, your house is paid in full. You need to know this argument because you're going to be in front of the judge. you got to go to court. You ain't going to do it by sitting at home. And they're going to try and jam you up. And once they get you jammed up, the judge is going to say, well, if you don't have an answer, we got to side with the crooks because he don't want to go to jail either because it's his job to watch the crooks. So if you can prove that they are crooks, then the judge is also a crook by what they call prima facie evidence. It's not your job to go to, 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 to school on the judge. If he don't know what he's doing, he must he should step down. And if he admits he don't know what he's doing, now you got grounds for a appeal because now you have subject matter jurisdiction, which means the judge is an idiot. Every stuff. But it's all simple. And all you gotta do is read. Further, the method calls for the proceeds of payments from one note to be used as collateral, cross-collateral for another note. So now they want you to keep making payments without a note so that they can give dividends to the investor. And in turn, the investor is going to invest his money into that security-backed mortgage. This breaches the terms of the note, which states that payments by borrower will be applied to what the borrower owes. So once they start giving it to the investor, they breach the contract. This is, this is deep. Breaching the contract is a violation of your mortgage. So the investor receives the benefit of multi-obligors plus insurance and credit default swaps and an investment-grade rating that was obtained under the pretenses. But what the investor is holding is not the original note. He or she it is holding a stream of revenue with multiple conditions. The conditions promised to pay is not a negotiable instrument. Wow. The 
on, the only party to record the on, the only party on record as Margie G or beneficiary under a deed of trust or under the mortgage has been paid in full as to principal, paid in full as to disclosed fees, and has received undisclosed fees as well because they were standing in for the real lender whose identity and existence was withheld from the borrower. These are all tiller, tiller violations. God so mighty no. Whoa, Truth and Lending Act. That's a federal uh, protection bureau. It's called TILA. Woo! The mortgage E would be MERS, the only party on record as mortgage E or beneficiary under a deed of trust has been paid in full as to principal. Paid in full as to disclose fees and has received undisclosed fees as well because they were standing in for the real lender whose identity and existence was withheld from the borrower. Woo! Purpose of the disclosure requirements is to create enough transparency that both the funding source and the borrower can readily perceive and risk or perceive the risk of the transaction. In this case, the pattern of conduct was to make sure the investor and borrower could never get together to compare notes. I got to read that again. To, this prevented the borrower from ass, uh, assessing rather better terms were available instead of the huge fees going to intermediaries. And it prevented the investor from, from uh, assessing the risk and rate of return up on investment because only a portion of the investment dollar was going to be fund was going to fund mortgages. The rest going to fees spread around like a whiskey barrel at a frat party. God do mighty no. Woo! This is this is dynamite. This is dynamite. That's what makes your securitization illegal. Let me see if we have any. We got a, we got a question. Area code seven zero eight four seven five nine. Do you have a question or comment? Area code seven zero eight. Four seven five nine. Do you have a question or comment? I can hear you breathing out there. I guess you don't have a question or comment. But that's uh, that's <laughs> that's unbelievable. Let me see if my main man. Andre Chaos is the end. Chaos, Yo. you there? Yes, sir. Yeah, what's up? What's did you, up? Did you, did, did you hear what I, I, I just read? Yeah, we, you know, we, Yeah. <laughs> we, we talked... <laughs> we talked the other day. They want to make sure that Linda don't get everybody together and figure out what the hell is really going on. That's 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 crazy. It is, but man. They've been doing it for years and they've been getting away with it. So, you know. Yes, and they're going to keep on doing it because I'm trying to bring it out, and I'm struggling with this legalese because I know what I'm saying, but what I'm reading is not really.
to the to the nitty gritty because it's so. It's not uh, going to be to the nitty gritty. That's the whole purpose of legalese is to catch people up, confuse them, and screw yeah. them over. Yes. Yes. Yeah, everything is yes. hidden in legalese. That's why. That's why a lot of people say, like Jones say, you, we're uh, we're illiterate. Yes. Not not illiterate go, in the sense that we can't read, but illiterate in the sense that we can't comprehend the legalese. Comprehend. You actually, you have to. Yeah, you have to get down and get the uh, what do they got? The Red Baron's Dictionary, the, the 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 Black's Law Dictionary, and start tearing this shit apart and, and making sense of it. Yes. That's the only. That's the only way to, uh, you know, all roads lead to court. That's the only way to, to get through the the, the the bullshit is to start learning how they operate. Now you have to study that legalese in order to, and you know, and comprehend it, in order to get yeah. out of this mess because it's madness. They yeah. know what they were doing. Yes, 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 yes. And they're doing this, a damn this good is job. Architecture. Right? Yeah, this is this is our architecture. This is years and years of. You know, calculated uh, processes and thoughts, and you know, they yes. want to make sure people stay stay stuck. Yes. So. Yes. You know. Woo! I'm well, learning. Boy. I'm learning myself. I'm telling you, I'm learning. Uh, yeah, yeah, everything we everything we do and every day that goes on, I'm learning something different. I'm learning how these bastards have have, have uh, really just ruined. The country and 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 lying their pockets at the same time. Yep. You know, did you ever see the movie uh, Michael Moore's movie Capitalism, a love story? No, I, I never watched that. I, I I got I have a copy. I think I want to put it up on on uh, okay. up on the uh, what's your name uh, website. Okay. We can make that. It, it yeah, we'll make that happen. Yeah. Yep. And uh, one more thing, while we talk about the website, uh, uh, West Montgomery bumping on bumping on the sunset. I don't see it. That was one of my favorites. So I'll uh, if, yeah, if it's not up there, I'll get it up there. It sh- yeah. Everything should be back up there, though. Yep. yep I down you did, in that list. Yep, I did, and I did it a couple of times, but I didn't see. Uh, okay, well we'll I get, didn't, I didn't get it up there man. tonight. Yep. I'll okay. get it up there. Yep. Who is it? I on the sunset. West, West Montgomery. Go okay. West. Yeah, maybe I maybe I missed that one. Yep. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, this uh, capitalism a love story. I've seen it, and it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, very interesting. And we'll get mm-hmm. it up on up on the website. And uh, five. But donation of five bucks. No, I got to, I got to mail that baby. She sucks, and they charge her two fifty to mail it, and I got to mm-hmm. go to the post office. So That's why they make something called shipping and handling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk yes, about it sir. tomorrow when we, when we have a, a conversation. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Okay. Sure. Um, All West right, Montgomery brother. bumping on. What is it bumping on what? Sunset. Bumping on sunset. Bump, okay. Bumping bump it on the sunset. Yep. All right. I'll yep. get to it right now. Okay, buddy. Appreciate it. All right. Appreciate you. Yep, no problem. Yep. Appreciate right. you too. All right. Yep. Later. Ready. Let me get this brother out of there. There you go. Okay. Uh, you know, I got a lot of stuff. But most of it is kind of boring, if you will. Uh, uh, this this FASB is something like GAP. Now, I want you to listen. When you get in and start studying some of this, you you run into some acronyms. FASB. It stands for Financial Accounting Standard Standards Board. is a private nonprofit organization whose primary purpose is to establish and improve GAAP. GAP. I know everybody has heard of GAP. GAP is generally accepted accounting principles. 
within the United States organization responsible, I mean, within the public interest, within the public interest. SEC is called Security and Exchange Commission, designated the FASB as the organization responsible for setting accounting standards for public companies in the United States. A, uh, FASB replaced the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. They're the ones, and then you got the APB, which is Accounting Principal Board. This American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, those are the ones that monitor your comprehensive, what do they call that, uh, audit report where every municipality is book is is foolproof of not filing bankruptcy you've heard me talk about that and they check them and and file now what happened with most of these uh boards that cover this these these crooks your presidents that that uh y'all love like Kennedy's and the uh, Clintons and uh, Jimmy Carter's, all the ones that black folks just love, they sign bills to eliminate the regulators. So you got these departments are still up and running to check the banks, but they cut the funds to them so they can't hire auditors to go out and check them and check. And they never talk about it because so many people get paid when they are not doing their job. And then if you don't know, they'll throw in your face, well, we got regulators that check that. They must be uh, incompetent. The mayor or the president must be hiring or doing things that get the wrong people in office. All that negative talk, since you don't know, they'll always make it sound good for them. But this FASB, they got several different ones. The 125, for example, a transfer of financial assets in which the transfer or er surrenders control over those assets is accounted for as a sale to the extent that the consideration other than a beneficial interest and the transferred asset is received in exchange. So what they're really saying is they're making transfers of financial assets, and they're doing it on paper, but the assets never leave. They never transfer. They're just doing it on paper. That's why they have to swear in and sign an oath that they don't that they won't cheat. And that's why it's difficult for you and I to sue because we're not supposed to know what's going on on the other side of the coin once they destroy our promissory note. Mm -hmm. Here's another one, FASB 133. The transfer assets have been isolated from the transferor from me as the borrower. I don't know nothing. But presumptually, beyond the reach of the transferor and its creditors, even in bankruptcy or other receivership, either each transferee obtained the right free of conditions that constrain it from taking advantage of that right to pledge or exchange the transfer asset or the transferee is a qualifying special purpose entity and the holder of, of beneficial interest in that entity have the right free of conditions that constrain them from taking advantage of that right to pledge or exchange those interests. These are just gobbledygook lies that 
They make you think, well, they actually are set up to protect you, but they're not really protecting you. Because here's here, the transferer does not maintain effective control over the transfer e assets through, number one, an agreement that both entities have obligates and transfer to repurchase or redeem them before their maturity, or an agreement that entitles the transferer to repurchase or redeem transferred assets that are not readily obtainable. This is some, whew, well, let's do it this way. I'm making it very clear to you that you should look into your mortgage, your automobile, any big ticket item you have. And you first should ask for a letter of validation. You want them to validate the debt. And I think my next show, I'm going to do a, 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 a piece on validation. What does it mean to validate the debt? Everything I've given you the, tonight is proof that they cannot validate the debt. And every time you get an agreement, you get agreements with credit cards, you get agreements on the backside of that big pink slip when you purchase an automobile, a new one, those agreements lie through their teeth. They tell you what they are doing. No, no. They tell you what they're supposed to do, but they don't do it. Because nothing that I've said tonight have you ever heard of before or you've read it. And every one of them should be able to tell you this. So, until tomorrow, I'll be with Detroit's news television at 6.30. We start tomorrow at 6.30. Information is free. The law. Oh,